In this lesson, we'll study how to solve absolute value inequalities. Generally, there are two types of absolute value inequalities. We may have absolute value of something is smaller or smaller equal than certain constant number k, or we may have the absolute value of certain expression is bigger or bigger equal than a constant number k. Let's focus on the first case. Remember, absolute value of certain expression really tells us how far this expression is positioned from zero. What is the distance of this particular expression from zero? Well, this distance is supposed to be less than k steps. Okay, so if you imagine a number line, if this is zero, the expression can move up to k steps forward or backwards. I intentionally talk about expression rather than x, because that's not x that goes k steps apart from zero. That's a full expression that goes k steps apart from zero. And our role is to find out what are the values for x that will make the expression living in this interval from negative k till k. How do we do that? Well, we drop the absolute value and we are going to use simultaneous inequalities to describe the fact that our expression is within the bounds from negative k to k. So we place the expression at the middle and we enclose this expression by negative k and k. For instance, if we have absolute value of x plus 1 is smaller than 2, that tells us that x plus 1 is less than two steps apart from zero. Therefore, we drop the absolute value and we rewrite this statement by saying our expression x plus one is enclosed by the numbers negative two and two. It is between negative two and two. And now we know how to solve it from previous video. We subtract one from all three sides and we end up with just x at the middle. So 2 minus 1 is 1 and negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. That tells us that x by itself will have to oscillate between negative 3 and 1 in order for our expression x plus 1 to oscillate between negative 2 and 2. That means in order to satisfy this absolute value inequality. In this case, we'll write that x is any number from negative 3 to 1 as our answer. Okay, let's see the second case. This time, the statement says that absolute value of something is bigger than a constant number k. So how should we interpret it? Again, absolute value tells us how far the expression is from zero. So if this is zero on the number line, the expression goes more than k steps, either to the right or to the left but then it means that the expression is below negative k. So we have two possibilities. Our expression could be positioned on the number line below negative k, which means we write expression smaller than negative k, or it can be larger than k, so we write expression bigger than k. So in this case, we end up with two intervals, and we're taking a union of these two intervals which means the connecting word between the two inequalities is OR. Obviously, in both cases, we may have equal sign included as well. But generally, if absolute value of something is farther than certain constant number, you resolve the situation by writing two inequalities. One is below negative k and the other is above k, like on the diagram. You can think of a zero like a center, and then think of a donut like this. The absolute value inequality that is larger than certain constant gives you always the outside regions. And the absolute value of something that is smaller than certain constant gives you the inside region. Okay, let's illustrate this with similar example as before. If we have x plus 1, and just for change, I will use bigger equal to include equality case. So let's this be bigger equal than two. How do we solve it? We drop the absolute value, but 
we need to rewrite the statement in two cases. Either our expression is smaller equal than negative 2, like on this diagram, or, and you keep the word or here, x plus 1, the whole expression is bigger equal than 2. And then we solve the two inequalities in both cases. So here we have x is smaller equal negative 3, or x is bigger equal 1. So the final answer, written in interval notation, will have to start from minus infinity and go up to negative 3, from negative infinity to negative 3. Since this time we have equal sign included, we'll use square bracket and here round bracket. And then union with the solution set of this inequality, so from 1 to infinity. So keep in mind both ways of resolving the absolute value inequalities, either smaller or bigger. So again, the smaller or smaller equal inequality gives you the inside region, and the bigger or bigger equal gives you two outside regions, farther away from the center. Let's see particular examples. We need to solve those inequalities, graph the solution set on a number line, and state the answer in the interval notation. As you can notice, the first inequality follows the first pattern. So we have absolute value of something that is smaller than 5, meaning that our something is enclosed by negative 5 and 5. It is the inside region. OK, as soon as we have this written, the rest we already know how to solve. We are adding 1 to all three sides in order to get closer to x. So negative 5 plus 1 is negative 4 smaller. This negative 1 is cancelled, so we have negative 2x smaller. 5 plus 1 is 6. And then to get rid of negative 2, we divide by a negative number. Remember, any time we divide by a negative number, we have to switch the inequality sign. So in this case, both inequalities will be reversed. And then, since we divided by negative 2, we have just single x. That's what we wished for. 6 divided by negative 2 is negative 3. And negative 4 divided by negative 2 is 2. So the solutions are all x values that are between negative 3 and 2. We can draw it on the number line. If this is negative 3, and that's 2, our x's can oscillate between these two numbers. So the final answer is x can be any element from negative 3 till 2. Let's see example b. This time, something in absolute value is bigger equal than 4, meaning that this something is positioned either below negative 4 or above 4. OK, so let's write this. Our expression can be positioned below negative 4, or the same expression could be positioned above 4. And then we solve each case separately. We multiply everything by 3, so that will be x minus 2 smaller equal negative 12, or x minus 2 bigger equal 12. And finally, we add 2. So x is smaller equal negative 10, or x is bigger equal 14. We can draw it on the number line, maybe somewhere here. Smaller equal negative 10, meaning our numbers could be somewhere here. Or bigger equal than 14, it could be over there. Therefore, the final answer should be stated in interval notation. Let's read this interval from minus infinity till negative 10. And negative 10 is taken because the equation was included. Or, meaning union, from 14, again cover dot, we take this point, until infinity. Well, let's try another example. This time we have two negatives on both sides. Well, I would prefer to get rid of those negatives first. Not to mention that, similarly as in the equation, 
it's a good idea to isolate absolute value first. That means get rid of anything outside of the absolute value. So let's multiply the whole inequality by negative 1, meaning red alert. We have to switch the inequality sign and we have 2x minus 3 in absolute value smaller or equal than 7. Then I can use one of those two cases from the previous slide. Since our distance of this expression from 0 is less or equal than 7, I can drop absolute value and I can enclose the remaining expression by 7 and negative 7 from the bottom. It oscillates between negative 7 and 7 and then solve it the regular way. That means add 3 to all 3 sides, that will be negative 4 smaller equal 2x smaller equal 10 and finally divide by 2 to get x by itself. So that will be x enclosed by negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2, 10 divided by 2 is 5. Again, if I draw it on the number line, I need to mark these two important points, negative 2 and 5. And the value of our solution x can be any point in this interval. So let's record this as an answer. x can be any element from negative 2 until 5 inclusive. OK, let's try the last example. What would you do here? Remember, isolate absolute value first. Meaning, let's put this 5 to the other side. So we will have 1 third x plus 7 stays in absolute value and that's bigger than 6 minus 5 is just 1. And then we can follow the second case from previous slide. Since our distance of this expression from 0 must be larger than 1, the expression should be either below negative 1 or the same expression could be above the 1 and then solve it. Well, let's subtract 7 in both cases. So we'll have 1 third x smaller than negative 1 minus 7 is negative 8 or 1 third x larger than 1 minus 7 is negative 6. Finally, to get rid of this coefficient, we use opposite operation. Since this was division by 3, we multiply by 3. So x would be smaller than negative 8 times 3 is negative 24, or x larger than negative 6 times 3 is negative 18. I can draw it on the number line here. So let's say negative 24 is somewhere here, and the x is to the left of it or negative 18, let's say it's somewhere here, and our x could be positioned to the right of it. So final answer will contain two intervals connected by the u sign. Union of these two intervals from minus infinity till negative 24 without the endpoint, union from negative 18 till infinity. That's our final answer. And two more examples, but you will notice that those are very special cases. How come? Well, let's think about it. We have absolute value of something, which remember, it's always positive or zero. And then this non-negative number is smaller than a negative number. What can we say about it? No positive number will be smaller than a negative number. Also, 0 will never be smaller than a negative number because it's larger. So in this case, we don't really need to solve anything. We know just by analysis of signs that the answer is no solution. Or we can say the solution set is an empty set. And finally, the last example, always keep in mind that we would like to isolate absolute value. So Let's divide the whole inequality by negative 2, but that means that we have to switch inequality because we are dividing by a negative number. So it will be larger. And then we have absolute value of 3x minus 4 larger than 16 by negative 2 is negative 8. 
Okay, let's analyze the signs of this statement. On the left hand side we have something that is always positive or possibly zero but never negative. And then the statement says this number, non-negative number, is larger than a negative number. Okay, but isn't it true that any positive number is larger than a negative number? Also, isn't it true that zero is always larger than any negative number? Yes, that's true. So that means that in this case, the solution for such statement will be all real numbers. There is no problem. No matter what we take for x, this will always be non-negative, which is definitely larger than something negative. So the answer is all real numbers. The inequality is always true, no matter what the x would be. So that's why we have special cases, either entire number line or not even one point. Okay, and now you need to start practicing on your own.